Hello everyone, today I'm here to do a book review. I feel like I haven't done a book review in a long time but the reason for that is because I've read the first three books in a series and I thought instead of just doing one individual review for each book in the series I just kind of wrap up my feelings for all of them in one video. <laughs> review or reviews rather I should say is going to be on the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Moss thus far. This series is still ongoing. Six books that are going to be in the series and the first three have been released and I have read the first three. There is also a kind of um, novellas in between and there's this The Assassin's Blade which is right here. I don't own that and I haven't read that yet but it's kind of like um, novellas one through five I think or something like that. I do plan to read it. I just haven't had the time to order it or the fun to quit yet. So yeah, let's talk about Throne of Glass. So we have Throne of Glass, first book. Then we have, sorry about that, these books are massive. Crown of Midnight, which is the second book. And then we have Air of, Fi Air of Fire, which, which is the latest book that just came out. So yeah, let's talk about this, these books. Why are these books so tall? I can't put them here for you to see. Uh... Now before I get onto these reviews, I will say I will pronounce everybody's name wrong because that's just how I roll. I look them up on how to pronounce them right and then I forget and that's just that's how it happens. So I just want to put that out there. Throne of Glass is, in high, is a high fantasy and high epic fantasy series or just a fantasy series I suppose. I originally um, got into this because I felt like I was reading a ton of contemporary this summer like a lot of contemporary which isn't a bad thing but I kind of wanted to shake it up a little bit so I picked up Throne of Glass and I'm so glad I did. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Throne of Glass and then after that we're going to get into some spoilers so yeah. I'm familiar with Throne of Glass. Like I said it's a fantasy novel. Um, It has a map in the beginning of the book which is really cool. It's all about a girl named Selena. Selena has been um, a slave in these in these mines for like a year and then she then some and then a guy named Kale comes and gets her out because he says that the prince, prince Dorian of Endeavor, if I, I didn't pronounce that word, wants her to compete as his champion for his father, the king, so she can be like the king's assassin. And she does this because she gets out of the um, gets out of the minds of being a slave, first of all. And if she does be the king's assassin, she I think she if she wins this championship of assassins, she gets to be the king's assassin for I think three years and then she's granted her freedom so what a great opportunity. So that's what the whole pretty much Thorn of Glass thing is about. Of course there are many many more elements that come into play like magic and stuff. So many different things come into play in this series and yeah that's just the general gist of it. I will say if you're worried of fantasy I think this is a good book to start on. I am I don't read too much fantasy. I really should because I do enjoy it. I don't think I read too much because I get confused really easily with fantasy because there's so many different subplots going on. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. But I will say I highly enjoy this series. It's one of my favorite fantasy series. It's my favorite series right now ongoing, if I'm being honest. I love all of the characters. The story is amazing. There's so many different like subplots and stuff like that that are just awesome. I love that and I just really love this series for being a fantasy series. So definitely check it out if you are weary about it. If you're not, just check it out period because it's awesome and you're gonna find a lot of swoon worthy guys and a lot of kick butt girl because Selena is like one of the, she's, she's a tough girl. Like I would not want to be locked in a room with fighting her because I'd be it'd be done. Now let's talk a little bit about each book. I'm going to talk a little bit about the first two books and then I'm going to talk a lot about Air Fire because that's what I just read. Now Throne of Glass, I liked Throne of Glass. I will not say I loved it um, but I did really enjoy it and the reason for that is because it took a little bit for me to get into. It took a lot I think with fantasy novels it takes a lot to build up like the plot, to build up like the backstory, to understand all that kind of stuff so it did take me a little bit I would say like maybe a hundred pages to get into but when it got good it got good. I, I love the main character Selena. She is just a very hardcore type of girl that has she's the girl that's really really I want to say jagged maybe that she's had a lot a lot as you read more into the series go on with her life and you feel sorry for her but she's just trying to be very strong and she's got a very very hard outer shell and she doesn't like to expose that to anybody much less herself and you know throughout these books you see her kind of not crack but kind of we see her a little bit more trying to embrace who she is learning to forgive herself learning to accept her flaws because we all have flaws that 
we all just do. But I really love Selena. I love her character development through the series. Impeccable, amazing. I'm glad I love that. I love reading the other characters, Dorian, Prince Dorian. He's a great character. I will say there's there's definitely a love triangle in the first see, um, first book, and I was Team Kale, and I'm still Team Kale. If I'm being honest, I love Kale. I think that you know he's a very dynamic character where he is very confused about where he falls and you're kind of like what are you doing man make up your freaking mind and you know but you're still rooting for him in the meantime at least I am <laughs> but um Throne of Glass was a highly highly good novel a highly um good first novel I'd say in the series definitely worth reading I will say it was a little bit tough for me to get into but overall I enjoyed it so I gave it a four out of five Crown of Midnight. <laughs> that was the second book. And now when I went into Crown of Midnight, I heard that Crown of Midnight blew um, Throne of Glass out of the water. And I was like, sometimes I hear stuff like that, like, you know, the second book and you never can know. But I got to say, everyone was 100% right. Like Crown of Midnight, like kick Throne of Glass's butt, honestly. Like I warp speed through that book. Like I I couldn't believe how fast I read it. Like I couldn't get more. I couldn't get enough of it. I loved it. I got to say, like the this series, all the books after the first book are better than the first book, which I don't know if that's bad to say, but the series is awesome, but just the books just keep getting better. Like, it, like they keep outdoing themselves, like they trump one another. But Crown of Midnight was an amazing second book. We learn more about Selene, we learn more about the magic that's happening with this series, which is still kind of confusing to me because I don't know if I have a small brain or something, but I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I love reading about the magic aspect of like how this comes into play about how the power and the king and the king's such a freaking jerk like I said I'm not gonna talk about the first two a lot so hope that's okay Crown and Midnight I loved it I love the kale Selena oh my gosh the little little glimpse that we got I loved it and then it was like blown up and then with Nehemiah ugh. I gave that book five out of five amazing let's talk about air fire I saved a lot because I know I'm gonna talk about this a lot Air Fire was amazing. It was truly amazing. I, the only problem I have with it, it took me forever to read for some reason. You ever Have you ever read like a really good book? And you know it's a really good book, but it's just taking you forever to read. Like, and you can't figure out why. That it was with me with Air of Fire. Like, I knew it was good. I knew it was amazing. I knew I loved it, but I was like, I could not read it like in a good pace. Like, it took me like a week and a half to read this book. And I was, I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> because usually like with, with anticipated sequels I fly through them like nobody's business but for this one I was like what is wrong with me needless to say Air of Fire was an amazing book it, it wasn't it is an amazing book it's a chunker of a book I will say that but there were so many different subplots in the story which I highly enjoyed reading about I loved reading about the different aspects of things going on through different parts of the world because this world that they are in is hugely vast like the first plot we have is we have um, Dorian and Kale's kind of thing going on, which is they're still in the kingdom and trying to figure things out. And Dorian is learning more about his magic and how he can kind of fight it off and stuff like that. And then Kale's still trying to, like, you know, understand the fact that Selene is actually Aelin. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, and is trying to become allies with um, Adian. There's so many confusing names in this book. And, you know, throughout the book where I'm kind of, I was kind of like wishy-washy with Kale. O ultimately, I still love Kale. And ultimately, if I'm being honest, I'm still a Selena and Kale shipper. Do I think that's going to happen in a game? Probably not. Because... There's so many different other love options in this book, it seems like. Um, but, um, you know, Kale was really struggling in this book, trying to, you know, find the truth, trying to figure out what side he really lies on. And, you know, it was tough and you're like, get with it. But I'm like, you know, it takes time after learning something your whole life and learning that it's not the right thing from your whole life. If you get what I'm saying, it takes time to realize that, you know, that's a big decision to make. That's a big crossover to be like I'm against this you know this is wrong this is not right even though I was taught this my whole life um that's a it's kind of a hard, harsh thing to go through so I was I under, ultimately understood Kale and I'm glad he you know did what he did worst timing ever yeah hmm. Adian was very interesting to read about he was fiercely loyal to um Selena or the one thing this is gonna be off tangent I do not like about this series is the fact that that girl's got like four different names like I I ugh, like her real you know her name um her real name's Aelin that's her real name but then she goes by Selena and then Nehemiah gives her a name and I'm like there's these three different names going on and I'm like just freaking pick one 
pick one. And I know it's like the disguise stuff, but I'm just like, it gets confusing to read about for me. Honestly, I don't know if I was the only one that felt that way, but I was like, I, you got like three different identities, girlfriend. Just pick one and just let's, let's go with it. Let's just, please, let's just stick to that name and be good with it because I got confused sometimes. Maybe I'm the only one out there, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's fiercely loyal to, uh, it's fiercely loyal to Aelin. But he was fiercely loyal to her. Like, you know, he is going to help her be a queen again. He's going to be on her side no matter what. Like, this girl's got so many supporters that she didn't even know about quite yet. And, you know, she's, it's, when this happens, it's going to happen. And it's going to be big for her and stuff like that. So I loved reading about the Kale kind of, Kale, Adian, like, teaming up together and stuff like that. The Dorian, I liked reading about Dorian. And then he had that girlfriend, Scorcia, which I felt was a complete waste of time. Like, I did not care about the relationship at all. Like, I was like, good for Dorian, you know, finding somebody. I really didn't care. When she got beheaded, I still really didn't care. I was like, whatever, peace out. Sorry. But then when the king put the word key on Dorian, then I was like, oh, crap. This just got real. This dude is a prisoner now. He's a slave we need to save him like this is gonna get bad real fast because he's gonna oh, oh, oh like everything that could go wrong in that chapter like went wrong like it was like the <laughs> the season finale you don't want to be the season finale like it was horrible um so yeah that storyline was great despite the dorian scorcia thing i was like waste waste then we have manon or is it manon manon i'm just gonna say manon because it's easier Man and storyline still confusing to me. It was very interesting to read about, but it's just gonna. I know it's in there for a reason because it's all gonna come into play soon. All these people are gonna meet, and it's gonna be some huge epic thing. But Man and storyline was very interesting to read about. You know, she's a black bee. Is that right, black bee? Beak. But she's. You know, it, it was interesting to read about all these witches and their covens and how they're like. The king is building this freaking insane army with these wyverns that are quintessentially dragons. Like, I had to look that up, honestly, <laughs> because I was like, what the crap are these things? But that, she was very interesting to read about. I really love the part where the Crotian, which, you know, said, like, you know, you guys are not born without hearts. You know, you're trained that way. You have hearts in you, pretty much is what she's saying. You're just trained not to use them. You're trained to be like, there's no heart within me. And I feel like we see a little glimpse of that with, with Man and thinking about that, questioning that. And so you're thinking, how is this gonna come into play? Selena, cause she is quintessentially building this army of these witches and these wyverns to just mess up anybody who tries to um, come in contact with him, which is, I don't know if that's a smart thing on him because a lot of these witches, they just can't be trusted because they're just crazy. But um, I wonder if, you know, man, it's going to be like, realize that she does have a heart and that it is okay to use it and be like, I'm going to go on Selena slash Aelin slash that other name, name I gave her side. So it was very interesting to read about her, you know, I did like that, but I just felt like it was kind of odd in the book, but I will say I did like reading about her. Now we're on to Selena slash Aelin slash that other name. <laughs> I love reading about her and how we really got to see her in this book. We got to see her, you know, her backstory a lot. We got to see her, how she, you know, feels so beat up about every situation, about everything she's done in her life. It just feels like it's coming back in this book and that it's just wearing her down and it's just pulling her down completely. And I love seeing, you know, her fight that and her become stronger and her embrace who she is, embrace her face side, embrace that, you know, that she can make a difference, that she can do all of these things. And Rowan was a great character to um to introduce with that. Like he is a a great loyal friend and I love how they're like I don't know what the Karaman, like blood brothers or something, let's just say that, you know, they're bound to each other. And I loved how it wasn't romantic because I feel like there's a lot of different romantic relationships that this girl could go in. And I'm like, we're getting pulled in all because they're still Dorian, they're still Kale. And now there could be Aiden. and Aiden could be in love with her. Now I'm like, Rowan, I'm like, holy crap, girl, you've got your pick of the crop there. Do what you want. <laughs> Um, but I love how they just made it, you know, like they're going to be, you know, Biffles. They're going to go through this war together and they're just going to be like in the kingdom together. They're going to rule it like they're going to be besties. I don't know what the word is, but I loved that. I love how he taught her how to be, you know, strong and stuff, even though a lot of the stuff he did do was very tough and stuff. But people need tough love sometimes. But overall, that was amazing. 
just reading about everything in that kingdom and Dornell and stuff like that. And that was just, it was awesome. I loved that. So I loved Air of Fire. Like I said, it took me forever to get through. I'm sure I didn't talk nearly as much as I wanted to talk about it. But anyway, I gave Air of Fire, Air of Fire 5 out of 5. Amazing series. If you guys have not read this series, pick it up, please. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought about them. And yeah, that is all for me. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.